Hello everyone, my name is Guillaume Côté, and this is the first tutorial, the first video of a series I am making entitled My First Blender Game, in which I will show you how to create your own game in the Blender Game Engine. Now, this will be a very simple game, very basic, but you'll see that we'll learn some very cool stuff and interesting features on the way. So, let us get started by taking a look at the final result we are aiming for. So if I press B to start the game engine, you can see that I can choose between play and quit and that the options get bigger as my mouse go over them. If I click, I can start the game, I can move around, I can collect coins, and there's a coins counter here. If I touch the enemies, my screen go blurry and my life goes down, my character starts flashing. If I collect the key here, it disappears and reappears here. There is also a time counter that goes down. And if it reaches zero, or if my life reaches zero, my character will, in fact, I will uh, go to the game over screen. And if I touch the metal bar while I have the key, they go up and I can touch the star and I complete the level. Now I have the option between play again and quit. And I'll select quit by pressing enter. So this is the game we are aiming for. Um, today we will learn about character movement, but in the next video you will see how to create everything you saw in this game. Except for the modeling and the animation, as I want this series to be only focused on the game logic. Uh, however, I will put some links in the video description to help you with these subjects if you are not at ease with them. And I'll also put a link to somewhere where you can download the default scene, the startup scene we will be using. Speaking of which, let me switch off Blender and go to it. So this is the default scene. Uh, it contains absolutely nothing except the mesh of the objects. They have no materials, no property. They are they aren't even renamed. And the first thing I want to do is to go in the game logic layout, and the fastest way to do that. Oh, sorry, let me start my screencast key. And the fastest way to do that is by control right arrow. In the in this layout, I want to remove this outliner, this text editor, as I won't need them. And what I want to do is that when I will press the D key, my character will go frontward. And when I press the D key, my character will go backward. But before I do that, I want to fix some problems we have right now, because if I move my character in the air, and I press P to start the game and join, you can see that we 1. we don't have any shader, and 2. our character isn't falling. So to fix the first problem, I'll go here and click on this button to select Textured. And we also have to add the light, so I'll press Shift A to enter the Add menu, select Lamp Point. I'll move my point lamp around here, just to have a basic light setup. And to make my character fall, I'll select the physics panel of the property editor, and I want to change its physics type. Now, I can do that right now, and this is because we are using the Blender Render Engine, and we want to use the Blender Game Engine. So if you select it, you see that we have a bunch of new options that appear in which I can change the physics type of my object from static to dynamic. So if I press spin now, you can see that my character is falling, but it is also falling in the ground. And there's a quick way to solve that, and it is by checking this collision bound checkbox here. I'll leave the default setting as they are, and what it will do is that it will put an invisible collision box around the character, preventing it from entering the ground. So, now that everything is set up, we can start to think about how we will make our character move. And there is a lot of way to do that, uh, but the one we will use are the logic bricks. Now, what are the logic bricks and how do they work? Logic bricks are a visual scripting tool. That's a very fancy term to tell you that it is a way to program your game, to make the logics work, to decide what will affect what and how, without having to cut it manually. 
And the way it works is by it is by adding sensors that will detect if a certain event happens to actuators that will make something happen. And between the two, there will be controllers that will well, there it is a bit complicated to explain, so I'll skip the explanation and keep it for later. For now, as I told you, I want my character to move forward when I press the D key. So since the D key is on the keyboard, I'll select a keyboard sensor. And the keyboard sensor has a lot of options, and the only one that truly that we will truly mind is the one next to key. And if you press it, it will ask for a key. I'll select D. And what it would do is the, it is that now, every time I press D, the keyboard sensor will be true. And it will trigger the actuator it will be connected to. Speaking of actuator, I want an actuator that will make my character move. And the one that do that is the motion actuator. Now, in order to make my keyboard sensor trigger the motion actuator, I have to click on this little hole here and drag the line all the way to the motion actuator. In between the two, there will be another a controller, default controller that will be added and we'll leave it as default. And oh, I completely forgot to tell you that the logic bricks we are setting right now only works for the selected object. So right now I have my character selected. If I select something else, you can see that the logic bricks aren't there anymore. Which means that we will have to set logic bricks for each object that we want to affect the game. So right now all it means is that be sure to select your character before setting your logic bricks. And to make it move, you can see that the motion actuator has a lot of options. And if you don't see that much options, it is pr probably because your character is still a static object. So just be sure to be a dynamic object. And I have tested all of these options. The location, the force, the linear velocity, the servo control. I even tried to code the movement using Python. And the way I have found that works the best is servo control. Now I still want to show you how the others work, just so you know how they work and why we are not using them. And the first one we will look at will be the location. Um, these sliders here, and I call these sliders because you can drag them. Yeah, I call these uh, drop down box and I call these check box. So these sliders here will change the location of your character every frame your sensor is true. Which means, and since there is 60 frames per second, it will give you the impression that your character is moving forward. And it works really well, really well. It, it is very easy to set up, but the problem with the location is that if you would collide with a wall, instead of colliding with it, you will enter it because your character is in, sort w in some way teleporting a bit, a bit further each frame. So at one point it will teleport inside the wall. And this is really bad because since your character is a dynamic object, the wall will push it back and you won't have any force or any speed to fight back the pushing of the wall and it will give you a very wrong, very bad gameplay. And this is why we won't use the location sliders. What about the force? Wait, the, well, well, the way the force works is by pushing your character a bit, far, a bit forward each frame the sensor is true, which means that the, your speed of your character will increase with time. And this is really good because it gives us a nice acceleration, a nice deceleration, a nice collisions with the wall. But there is one big problem and it is that your character can continue to increase its speed indefinitely. As long as your player is holding the D key, the speed of your character will increase and that is obviously wrong. And we could fix that by setting a maximum velocity to our object by going in the physics panel 
and here under velocity setting the maximum to let us say 5 and now our character wouldn't be able to go fastest than 5 faster than 5 but this brings another problem that is how about my character running how about my character falling since there is only one speed maximum speed for everything it will look very wrong and i won't be able to make some movement and that's why we can't use this we can't use the force either now it lets us with linear velocity if you don't know what velocity is velocity is pretty much a fancy term to say speed and there's two ways to use the linear velocity you can either use it as a set way or an add way to use it as the add way you have to press this AD button here and what it will do is that every frame the sensor is true it will add a certain number to the current speed and this, it, this will result on something very similar to the force and this will result to the same problem as a force so we can't use the add way what about the set way? the way the set way work is that every frame the sensor is true it will make your current speed equal to the speed contain, contained in those sliders and there's an interesting problem with that that, will, that I will show you in a second so first let us let me just move these objects in the air so that they won't be in the way and I'll set a linear velocity of 5 in the x-axis because that's where I want my character to move and now if I press P to start the game and D to make my character go forward you can see that it isn't falling why is that? well this is because of course our x speed is equal to 5 and this is what we want but we set at every frame our z speed equal to 0 which means that every time our character is supposed to fall gain acceleration because of gravity it won't be able because we will set the z speed to 0 at every frame and that is a big problem and this is why we can't use linear velocity that now it let us with only servo control as an option other than cutting it and to go in the servo control options you have to click this drop down menu here where it is written simple motion and select servo control you, now you see that the interface completely changed and that we have completely new options servo control can be very intimidating at first but once you know how to use it it is really simple and very powerful so let me allow you let allow me to explain you how it works simply first of all these sliders here determine the target speed this is the speed that Blender will try to make your character, your object, move. These chance box here tells Blender, tell Blender if he is allowed to use any value he wants or if he is limited to use only certain values. And if I, for example, check this button to tell Blender that he is allowed to use only limited values, you can see that we have now max and min and this letter tells Blender what is the maximum force he is allowed to use and what is the minimum force he is allowed to use to make our character go at the target speed so to make it simple imagine our object where uh, was a spaceship this would be its maximum speed and this will be it, its acceleration so the biggest are these numbers the fastest our character will go and the bigger are these numbers the faster our character will reach the t maximum speed and that is pretty much servo control is a notch in a nutshell we surely have a bunch of other options but we won't we won't mind them as the defaults are very good so for our scene I have found that the number of 5 works pretty well as well as an acceleration of 7.5 I also want to limit Blender to use a maximum value of 0 and a minimum value of 0 to affect the Z axis the Z speed because I don't want it to influence the Z speed 
However, I will let the Y speed unlimited because I don't want my character to have any Y speed. And now I will do the same thing for the other direction. So add a sensor, keyboard, select key, A, add actuator, motion, motion type, servo control, linear velocity of minus 5 because we want to go in the opposite direction, set limit, minimum I'll let it to 0 and minimum I'll, let, I'll put it to minus 7.5. So now, oh and I also have to check the Z value here. So now if I press P, you can see that we have this nice acceleration, nice deceleration, in fact we don't what is the problem? Oh, I completely forgot. I have to connect this keyboard sensor to this motion actuator. If I don't, it won't work. Okay, so we have this nice acceleration, we have this nice deceleration, and we have the, this nice collision. And this is how do you make a character move in the Blender game engine. And this is also the end of this, this today's tutorial. I hope you liked it and that you have learned something from it. If you find anything that could be improved in this tutorial, please leave a comment and I'll try to make the next one better. Uh, I hope I wish you a great day and I hope to see you in part two.